Want to analyze the proper response to a negative externality in an imported good. So this is not an externality in production domestically or consumption domestically. It's instead when the social cost of importing the good exceeds the privately perceived cost of importing that good. So analytically, what we're talking about is a situation where the marginal cost in the private market, say for the importation of petroleum, is some world price associated with the marginal cost of producing the good. But where there is a higher marginal cost of production from a social standpoint. So the difference between these two, the difference between the social cost and the private cost, are these externalities. Again, in the petroleum market, that might be uh, the cost of having uh, defense uh, establishment uh, across the Middle East uh, to protect the shipping lanes for, uh, uh, for petroleum. But private citizens are going to make the decision based on the market uh, on the market price. So let's see what the social optimum is for importing this product. make this a little less, a little less uh, severe so it's easier uh, to draw. Okay, so here's the marginal social cost. There's the domestic supply curve. And here is the domestic demand. So the Private citizens are going to make the decisions based on a private cost. Q1 is going to be produced domestically. Q3 is the amount that's going to be consumed uh, domestically. If we take into account the social costs of importing, again, this is not of the, in the production of the good, it's the actual importation that has the, the problems. From society's standpoint, you're going to look at where social cost of production equals uh, the um, where, where the where the the, the, the social price will uh, intersect the uh, domestic supply curve, and if consumers are basing their decision on the social cost of importing, they will. Uh, consume Q4. So what you see is that there are too many imports coming in under free trade, where the imports are Q2 to Q1, compared to the social optimum, which is Q4 uh, to Q3. So the first part of this analysis is to take a look at the identifying the inefficiencies associated with free trade. So let's start on the production side. So this amount, Q1 to Q3, is part of the imports of under free trade. What a domestic firm believes the cost of that might be is the area under the, their cost curve. So AB is the domestically incurred cost of producing Q1 to Q3. Now, in the, in the private market, B, the world price times the quantity, is how much it costs to get this from foreigners. Okay, that's what you have to pay on the international market. So the domestic firm can say, look, it costs me more to make than it would cost to get this from imports. I'm not going to do this. But you have this area E, which includes some of these uh, social costs. So the social cost of importing Q1 to Q3 
3 is E A B. Okay, it's the private perceived cost plus E A, which is the social cost of the increased social costs over and above the private cost. The domestic cost of producing Q1 to Q3 is only AB. So by importing this amount, Q1 to Q3, there are social inefficiencies of E. That's the excess of import costs over and above the domestic production costs. So free trade has this inefficiency of E. Too little domestic production relative to imports. Okay, so that's one aspect. The other aspect has to do with the consumption side. F, G, H. Okay, so let's look at the domestic benefit for consumers. Consuming Q4 to Q2. So this is this this is the total benefit that consumers get. For them, that cost or that benefit is GH. It's the area under the demand curve. So this is this is how much consumers uh, value this. They only had to pay H in the private market. Okay, this this box here. So they, they figure, hey, I'm getting GH in benefits. It's only costing me H. It's worth it to import these products. The social cost of importing Q4 to Q2 is E, oh, I'm sorry, F, G, H. It's the private cost plus this area F plus G. So these are the costs of importing this product, inclusive of these social uh, consequences. So the domestic consumption inefficiencies free trade is area F. It's the difference between the benefits of consuming it and the actual social costs. So what we have here is that from an economic standpoint, the importation of this product causes there to be these two deadweight losses, E and F. Now, this lies behind some of the basic, uh, what are called general exceptions of the gap. Countries can increase their restrictions on imported goods if they cause, uh, for example, problems to human health. So if the imported goods, say, was a dangerous product, so it was the imported good that was dangerous, had some carcinogen or something uh, in it that the domestic source didn't, that if you didn't take into account the health consequences, you might import too much. So in this case, the first best action when, extra, when the externality is in the importation of the good, a way to internalize the externality, the first best action would be import restrictions of some sort. You raise the marginal 
price in the market, in the import market, by the difference between these two. If you raise the tariff by that amount, you'll be able to gain back areas E and F. Sure, there's a, there are increased prices. You're going to have increased domestic supply. You're going to decrease domestic uh, quantity demanded. But that is in exactly what you want to, in, uh, to have happen because you are importing too much. So if the argument is, is that imports themselves are a consequence or have a uh, the consequence of, of imposing social costs, then the import restriction might make sense. Now, I want to be clear that under Article 20, in which there's a, a separate video, it's tempting for countries to invoke this and say, "Hey, you know, we're you know we're not we're not trying to be protectionist. We're just, we, imports are just causing problems." So, in order to invoke this Article 20, the tariffs dealing with these externalities, the GATT requires that there is a scientific basis, there's some true justification for the, uh, the uh, restrictions on the imports. So for example, if you, take the, if you take cigarettes, whether a cigarettes are produced domestically or internationally, they cause health problems. So you wouldn't be able to uh, raise restrictions just on imported cigarettes, because it's not the importation of the cigarettes that causes the problem. It's the, it's the consumption of cigarettes from, from wherever they arrive. So there are actually some significant uh, limitations on the ability of countries to invoke Article 20, but this really is the economic analysis of why Article 20 exists or Article 21, which deals with national security exceptions. So there are instances where import, import restrictions might make sense because of the externalities, but the WTO and the GATT agreements put significant restrictions on the ability of countries to do that uh, in an arbitrary and unjustifiable way.